Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Before we get started today, I just wanted to let you know that we've created the Symphony POS Support private Facebook group. This is a free group that anybody can join and ask any questions you may have about the Micros POS systems or the hospitality industry in general. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. I had a question from one of your colleagues about how to program a menu item that only prints in the kitchen but not on the guest check. So I wanted to take the time and make a video about printers and print classes and more specifically how to program them for some specific use cases such as that one and both for menu items and modifiers. So let's get started. First, let's clarify some terminology. We're going to use printers, order devices, print classes, and we're also going to use menu item classes. So let's start with the connection between printers and order devices. In order to see our order devices, I'm going to navigate here to the revenue center level and under the setup tab, I'm going to find order devices. The order devices connect to the printers themselves. So the printers are the physical machines and they can be found only at the restaurant level here under the printers tab. And if I click one, we can take a look at these are local printers. So these are the ones that are attached to the workstation. These are remote printers or ethernet roll printers and these have an ip address in our case so the printers themselves when we talk about it we are considering only the physical devices and how we connect them to the network now we connect these printers to order devices the order devices are the ones that are on the menu item programming side so that same expo printer that you saw is connected you can see the device name here expo is connected to the order device expo so connecting them like this one to one avoids any kind of confusion so if you hear me talk about the order device expo it's the same thing as talking to the expo printer now we do have these order devices and they are combined in print classes. I have my print classes defined at the enterprise level and I can open them here from the configuration tab and you can see print classes. When I open one of these guys, they're also named accordingly so I know what they are. Basically, print classes are a way to combine multiple order devices under one item. And the reason why we do that is imagine when you send a ticket to the kitchen, you want it to print in the expo printer, but you also want it to print in the grill and you also want it to print in the salad station maybe, or you need it in the expo and the dessert. So in order to have multiple printers together, we use print classes. Now, if you take a look at the print classes that I have defined here, you can see expo slash grill, but here it only says order device one and order device two. So in order to see them better, what I like to do is also open the order device tab, this one, and then I right click on this and I say new vertical tab group. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a side by side between the print classes and the order devices. Now I pretty much know cause I don't have a lot of them. So I know that one through six are my kitchen devices and then number 10 is my bar. But when you're programming these, it's good to have these side by side uh, in order to know which is which. So going back to the print classes themselves, these are the ones that we are going to define. They have two areas. Uh, well, they have three. The one is the name here first, and then we have the options area. So these options are going to be regarding if the menu item will print on the guest check or not. And then we have the output and the output is going to be related to the kitchen. So the middle section here is regarding the guest check. The bottom section is regarding the kitchen. So the request was, how do we create a print class for a menu item that is an amuse-bouche? So amuse-bouche is something that a lot of restaurants use, uh, where you send something to the customers as a small appetizer around the house. Either it could be a cooked item or it could be bread or anything else like that. A lot of times I see restaurant not recording any kind of freebies or a moose bush or something like that, but it's a good idea to bring it up into the system because first of all, sometimes these items do come from the kitchen. So the cooks do need to know to cook it. And second of all, it's also good for tracking and reporting. So you know how many of this you give away. So we do want the moose bush to print in the kitchen, but we do not want it to print on the customer check 
we don't want the customer to see that because it's going to be an item. It's, it is going to say zero dollars, but a lot of time that creates questions and concerns and they're going to ask what is that item and why are they getting charged for it? Then you have to explain that it's not a charge, it's on the house, etc. But it's good to avoid. So uh, the way we're going to do this is by creating a new print class. Now, the request specifically was to print this item in the expediter station because all of these come from the expo. If I take a look at my print classes here, I do have an expo, but as you can see, it also prints on the guest check, as do all the other ones. So I have expo and grill, expo and saute, all of the kitchen, expo and pizza. This is my bar, which is for drinks. And then I have something called check only, and this is usually used for stuff that doesn't need to go to the kitchen, such as merchandise or anything else like that. And then I have another one that is called kitchen only. But if I take a look at the output, it outputs in all six printers. Now, I don't want my grill and my saute, my salad, all of my printers to receive a ticket like this because they're not gonna be interested in that particular amuse-bouche. Depending on what you're serving, if, for example, you have a pizza place and you're serving just a little bit of bread before that, maybe you do want the pizza to receive that ticket. But in my case, it comes from the expediter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this one. I'm gonna use it as a template and I'm gonna click insert. And then I do want to send it at position 104, which is gonna be here underneath my priced mods. And I'm gonna check the box to use the template. And I'm gonna call this expo only. And then I'm gonna click okay. So now that I have my new print class, I want to go ahead and take a look at the options. So print on the customer receipt. We definitely don't want that and we don't want it on the guest check. These are both more or less the same. Uh, there's a small nuance, but basically they mean the same thing. So uh, don't worry too much about that. And then I don't want it to print in red either, but I do want it to print in the journal. The journal is just an electronic journal that the workstation keeps. So that's fine to check. And then for my routing for my kitchen, if I take a look here on the right, I have my expo at position one. And that's the only uh, printer that I want to send to. So I'm going to uncheck all the other ones. So now I have everything that goes only to the expo, but does not go to the guest check. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then we can go back to the home page and I can also close all the devices now. And what, all we need to do is we attach that print class and we either attach it to the menu item classes or we can attach it to the menu item itself. So let's go ahead and open our menu item classes. And I have my menu item classes defined here at the enterprise level and I'm gonna open the module. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy one of the existing ones. So I'm gonna go into my food item section and then I'm gonna click the plus to insert a new record. And this one will go to position 1002, which is just gonna be below my food item, which is fine. I'm gonna check the box to use a template. And I'm gonna call this one food expo only. I really like to be descriptive with these names when I add them here. So I know later on what they are. Why do I have two food menu item classes? That way I'm not confused on which one to use. That's why I put food expo only. And if you take a look at the ones that are food with requirements, these are the ones that require different condiments. So I have requires meat them, requires omelet toppings, etc. And then I'm going to click OK. And it's really good to have these together to keep your database organized. So that's going to help you out. Trust me. I'm going to open it up. And now I take a look at the print class itself. Of course, because I copied the regular food one, this one only goes to the expo. I'm gonna change it to the new one that we created that is expo only, because the expo, remember, also prints on the guest check, which we don't want to do. So we're gonna select its new print class and simply save. Now we can close menu item classes and let's add our menu item itself. So I'm gonna open menu item maintenance and mine is also defined at the enterprise level. Make sure you open yours at the correct level where you need to add it. And I'm gonna click search in order to populate all of my menu items in the database. And I'm probably gonna add my amuse here somewhere with the appetizers. So here is my appetizer section. You can tell by the little header here. Uh, if you want to locate your appetizer section, if it's further down in the database, just use the binoculars here or just use the keyboard shortcut control F 
to simply find your menu item and you just search by name and just enter the name of an appetizer that you are currently using. One that uh, already works and you know it's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my tomato bruschetta because I know this one works fine. I'm gonna click insert because I'm gonna use it as a template. And then from the drop down, I have to make sure that I add a master record from template. And I'm looking at where this record is gonna go. It's gonna end up at position 3016. Now I would like to put it a little bit further since this is kind of a one-off item. Uh, I'll probably put it at 3,900 and I'm doing this for organization purposes because when I add a new appetizer here, I'm going to have a bunch of appetizers, then the amuse, then a bunch of other appetizers. So it's good that this one will stay further down. So I'm just going to name this one amuse. And then for the price, I'm going to change it here and this will be $0 of course, because it's going to be for free. And then simply I'm going to click OK. Our menu item has been added successfully and I do not want to add another one. So I'm going to click no. And now I see my new item here. As far as the master record is defined correctly, it's a food item and it's an appetizer. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to move to the definition area and I'm going to take a look at it. And we have our menu item class that says simply food. And remember, we do not want food. We want food with expo only because that's going to print in our printer where we want to. And that's going to be food expo only. And it also going to appear in the appetizer slew. Now, because this one starts with an A, it's also very good. It's going to be at the top. So it's going to be easy for the servers to push it. And I'm going to double check my price. That is zero. That is correct. And all I have to do is save. So now let's go to the workstation and let's take a look at what we did. Okay, so here we are at the workstation and the first thing I'm going to do is click a quick update just to get my changes done and then I'm going to go ahead and sign in and I'm going to begin a table. So I'm just going to begin table number one and this is going to be for two guests. Now, as we can see, we already have our moose here in the appetizer section. So since I have two guests sitting, I'm going to send one for seat position one and one for seat position two. And let's say I already know their entrees. Somebody's gonna have a beef slider and a gnocchi Alfredo. So that's gonna be seat position one and two. So first they'll get their amuse and then they're gonna get their main courses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. After I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the application to show you what we printed. So I have this little digital check here and the first portion here is what the kitchen sees. So this is the expo ticket, as you can see here at the top. And what they did get is one amuse, a beef slider. So we got seat position one and two, the amuse bush, and then beef slider and gnocchi alfredo. So the kitchen knows exactly what to cook and what to send. And then if we take a look further down, this is what the guest sees. So first they have the beef slider and then the gnocchi alfredo. And as you can see, we do not have the amuse bush here, which is exactly what we wanted. Now that we got that scenario out of the way, since it's kind of a unique scenario that you can find yourself in, let's take a look at other print classes that we have defined and where we would use them. So the ones at the top are pretty typical. I think most restaurants will have these where you have an item that goes to the expo and grill, expo and salad. And of course we send everything to the expo and then the salad and saute grill, whatever the second station is, is the station that will actually cook it. So the expediter gets everything and then each station gets whatever they're gonna cook. Some restaurants like to send everything everywhere. So they would use something like the old kitchen print class in order for every station to know what everybody else is cooking. So that way, if you have a salad coming out with a well done steak, they're not gonna make the salad right away because they know the steak is uh, gonna cook for a while. But other items that we might have here would be the one that we mentioned earlier, which is check only. So if you're selling merchandise, or you're selling some kind of item that does not need to go to the kitchen. You don't have to check any of the boxes here. You only have the boxes here in the middle. And we can also take a look at the modifiers. Now the modifiers, the regular mods, we do not want to print on the guest check. So what we do have is all of the items are checked here. So all of the order devices, you know, the expo, 
and everything else, including the bar printer. So that doesn't mean that every time you order a modifier, then all of the printers will receive a printout. Modifiers are different from menu items uh, with the fact that what they're gonna do is they're actually gonna follow their parent menu item print class. So for example, if you send something that goes to the grill, like a steak, uh, you need the modifier to have that class selected at least, but it's only gonna print where its parent menu item is printing. So it needs to be allowed to print there. If you uncheck the boxes here, then the modifier will not print. And also this one has box number four checked here in the options area, which means it's gonna print in red. We do want the modifiers to print in red, so it jumps out in the kitchen's eye. So they see steak and fries, medium well. Now we have another item that we have to discuss and that is the priced modifiers. So these are items that you would charge extra. So besides having all of the kitchen printers selected, we also want them to print on the receipts. If you do have a priced modifier, do not just give them the regular mods uh, print class because they're not going to print on the guest check and the guest is not going to understand what's happening. I'll give you an example. If you're selling, for example, a vodka and you upcharge for rocks and let's say that the vodka is $10 and then the upcharge for rocks is $3. What the guest will see on their receipt is vodka $10, tolo $13. So they're going to say, why is my total more than the item itself? It doesn't make any sense. So that's because the price modifier is not shown on the ticket. So we definitely want to show those uh, on the ticket for the customers. So what we want to make sure is that everything is checked here in the options and everything is also checked here in the output area. And that's it for today's video. Remember to join our free Facebook group and let me know in the comments below what other topics you would like to see feature in a future episode. If you enjoy the content, please leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.